Have you ever wondered what it's like to work in cybersecurity? Well, the issue is people tend to say different things when it comes to what it's actually like to work in cybersecurity. Some say the job is absolutely stressful, while others say it's a breeze. In fact, some people complain that it's too boring. So to give you a different perspective, I asked one of my favorite cybersecurity YouTubers, Grant Collins, about his experience working in cybersecurity. And we compared his perspective versus my perspective because he's been in the industry for close to two years, what I've been in the industry for close to 20 years. So we both have different perspectives when it comes to what it's actually like to work in cybersecurity, but also what steps do we need to take in order to land our first cybersecurity job. Let's get into it. So Grant, did you have your A+, Network+, Plus, and CCNA, and did you work in help desk for three years before you landed your first cybersecurity role? Yeah, so I did not actually end up working help desk or getting my A+, plus CCNA. Out of high school, I ended up going through a university program in cybersecurity. It's a four-year degree. And uh, so I got my cybersecurity degree. And then right after my degree, I ended up landing my first entry-level role in cybersecurity as an associate security engineer. So do I think that an A+, plus, a CCNA is worth it? Personally, uh, I think it depends on your life circumstances. Uh, so it depends on where you're at in your life. And uh, if you don't have a college degree, I do think that having a degree can be helpful. It can just check off that requirement in resumes. But I do think that if it's not in a degree, then I do think that having an A plus or a CCNA or a level, few certifications can be helpful. How dare you? So you got your first job without a CCNA and without help desk. Uh, according to Reddit, this absolutely doesn't happen. So I don't know, man. <laughs> well, I, uh, I ended up getting lucky and had an opportunity for an individual who actually reached out to me on Discord. That's how this whole opportunity started. So you just, yeah, you just never really know um, who you're going to meet and the chances that they be, maybe will be willing to give you. You see, amazing how lucky you can get when you put yourself in the right place and the right time and you do the work and you do the degree, things just happen. That's exactly it. And uh, I think that it depends on your circumstances. And, and one of the general advice I always give people is to continue to stay persistent. You know, I know it can seem very discouraging, um, but through time, you will eventually find an opportunity. And uh, what do you think? You've been in this industry for over two decades. What, what, what advice would you give to somebody who's you know, having barriers when getting into cybersecurity? Yeah, look, exactly what you said. Like you, you need to put in the work. You can't just walk into a six figures job without doing anything. So definitely doing certifications. I'm not a fan of the CompTIA's or the CCNA's. In general, I don't like multiple choice based exams, but doing something, doing a certification, doing a degree and being in the right place at the right time and talking to people is definitely how most people get jobs. There is definitely a need for entry level cybersecurity professionals. And it's not as black or white as people on Reddit seem to think. So yeah, man, I agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. So for, for you in being in this industry, you've been in it for a while. Uh, this is something that I've recently encountered and I'm only two years in. Do you think that cybersecurity is stressful or do you think that burnout is real? Oh man, <laughs> that's a tough one. Look, I, I went back and forth in this one and I do have a very sort of, uh, I guess, different or unique opinion in this. I think burnout and stress is a very individual thing. I've worked in environments where there was, you know, 12 engineers and we were all, you know, looking at firewalls and stuff. Some individuals in that team were extremely stressed out, extremely burned out just from like seeing tickets and responding to clients while some of us were having a blast. So we were, we were all getting the exact same number of tickets, the exact same workload, but just the way we responded to stress was just individual and different. So I can't make a blanket statement and say, you know, working in cybersecurity is stressful because I think it's very individual. It also depends on the environment. Some environments will be extremely busy, extremely cutthroat, but I've seen other environments where security analysts are just, you know, doing nothing, reading the news and looking at alerts and going into blogs. So I really think it depends. It depends on how mature you are, how far you are in your journey. Like I used to get a lot more stressed out early in my career. I used to get stressed out over silly things, but now as I'm, as I'm older and wiser, I guess, um, things don't seem to be as stressful as they used to be. In my opinion, if I compare cybersecurity to things like emergency medicine or nursing or other jobs, I think cybersecurity is a lot less stressful than these other jobs. I've got friends who are nurses and friends who are doctors and their job is definitely more stressful. Yeah, absolutely. I, I understand exactly what you're saying there. Uh, personally, 
only being two years into this journey into the workforce, I definitely feel a sense of burnout or stress from the little things. When I'm asked to do something, uh, there's a small part of me that kind of freaks out because I have no idea what the answer is to that question. But yeah, through time, it can definitely be I don't know. I, I think you, you learn to not sweat the small things anymore. Before we continue, a word from our sponsor, Smart Proxy. A proxy server acts as a gateway between you and the internet. So when you're trying to access a website, your request is sent to the proxy and then the proxy takes it to your target website. As a cybersecurity professional, you will be dealing with proxies. You can use proxies for fraud detection, load balancing, and even penetration testing. Proxies come in handy because they mask your original IP address and therefore ensure your online safety and if privacy is important to you proxy can also help keep you anonymous it will also help you overcome certain restrictions by bypassing things like capture geo blocks and ip bans the advanced proxy rotation algorithm gives you a new ip for every request or it can allow you to stick with the same ip for up to 30 minutes smart proxy is a fantastic choice because they offer top-notch infrastructure that you can access up to six proxy types five scrapers and four free tools. They offer a very intuitive self-service with a smooth dashboard, quick start guide, and a public API. You can always reach out to their 24 by seven live support. Smart Proxy offers flexible, customizable pricing options with a 14 day money back option and a free trial for some of its products. One of the most popular Smart Proxy products is their top-notch residential proxies. Each residential IP is a real mobile or desktop device that pinpoints a certain physical location. With residential proxies, you get more than 55 million HTTPS and SOC 5S IPs, 99% success rate, and less than 0.6 seconds response time. Another great option is smart proxy data center proxies. Shared data center proxies are virtual IP addresses sourced at powerful data centers. The key feature of these proxies are 100k plus shared IPs, less than 0.3 seconds response time, and a custom plan setup option where you can pay per IP or pay bare gigabyte. But best of all, you can get a 20% discount using the code UNIXGUY20, which will give you 20% discount for first time users and is valid for all of their proxy and scaper products. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below and back to the video. Absolutely right. And that can be really, really stressful. Like I remember, you know, I'll get a ticket to investigate something and it's in a technology I've never heard of. I used to like get scared and not only that, it didn't stop there. I used to, used to start doubting myself like am I good enough am I an imposter do I need to know all of these protocols that I've never heard of so you're absolutely right this can be stressful and you know imposter syndrome is real because you'll always encounter something that you're not necessarily an expert on so look man I definitely hear you on this one so grant people are usually interested in certifications so if you want to give advice to someone who wants to land their first cyber security job or maybe they've landed their first cyber security job but they want to get to that next level what are some of your favorite certifications yeah, so absolutely. Speaking to my level of certifications, I ended up pursuing the Security Plus during my university freshman year. And then my senior year, I took one little AWS certification. So I do not have many certifications, especially like the big ones in cybersecurity industry. Uh, and so, so this is sort of a hot take, but you know, I don't think that a certification is necessarily going to get you the job just alone. I do believe that there is uh, more to the portfolio than just a certification. Uh, so I always see certifications as more of a bonus for an individual. It makes you stand out. Like, for example, a lot of people have college degrees. Having a certification is another level of standing out. And then there are other components that you can do to make yourself stand out from an entry level perspective. So from a, you know, my favorite cybersecurity certifications, I really can't speak to all of the certifications. Like I said, I don't have many certifications that I've taken, so I, I don't want to speak on behalf of those. But I would say just stick to the main ones. I know it's pretty generic advice. Uh, the, what about you? Uh, you know, what kind of certifications have you taken within your past? few years or decades here in this industry yeah man i've done a lot just because in the past we didn't have a lot of options so i remember a time when all we had was cissp and oscp and even certified ethical hacker was still a new thing so i've done a fair bit in my time and i've done some related to unix and red hat and other stuff in the past but the ones that i recommend people do now is uh, first of all i agree with you i don't think a piece of paper is what will get you the job but i do believe 
believe that you know a good certification can do wonders for your career. The ones that I recommend unanimously are the ones that are lab based. So anything that's practical, hands-on and based on a lab where you can practice what you've learned, these are the ones that I recommend. And admittedly, even as little as two years ago, we didn't have that many options that we have today. There is so many good options now where you can learn things from zero all the way to an intermediate and even advanced level in a lab environment. And so they are accessible to a large number of people. All right, so from your experience, what barriers do you see entry-level cybersecurity applicants encountering when they're applying to a plethora of jobs? And what advice do you have to counter those barriers? Yeah, absolutely. So from the people that I interview, I see two major problems stand out. The first one is most definitely lack of practical experience. And look, people seem to think lack of practical experience means that you need to have two or three years of professional experience in a company. That's not what I'm alluding to. What I'm alluding to is actually having some hands-on skills. So I'll interview those candidates who will come to me with a few certifications that are all multiple choice based, purely theoretical. And you know, they've done the work, they've memorized things about network protocol and security protocol but as soon as i ask them any scenario based question they seem to get lost and they get stressed and things start to go south in the interview so again just stressing the importance of practicing in a lab or doing hands-on certifications seem to be the thing that sets out people in interviews and seem to be the thing that we look for in jobs as well uh, i'd rather have someone who have practiced a little bit and can speak to the things they've learned than someone who memorized a bunch of things but can't do anything in the real world. I think that's the main major problem. To me, the second main problem that I see stopping some entry-level candidates is communication skills. So as an entry-level applicant, we know that you don't have all the skills that we need. Um, that's a given. People know like you can't fool the person who's interviewing you. But what we look for is usually willingness to learn and just generally good communication skills. I've met individuals who didn't dress nice or didn't look nice for the interview and some of them even come across as arrogant, which is a big no-no, especially in an interview setting where you are applying for an entry-level role. Um, and again, my advice for communication skills, it's, it's a tough one to work on, it's a tough one to improve, but it's not impossible. Usually my advice for that is for individuals, you know, to do things outside of work or outside of school where they get to interact with people and communicate with people just so they can learn and see how professional communication works. If you want to watch the second half of this interview where I ask Grant more questions, but he also asked me more questions, click on this video that will take you to Grant's channel and I'll see you there.